Good morning, good afternoon, and thank you all for joining us for today's webinar, The Convergence of Innovation and CASE. I am Joe Averkamp, Vice President for Systems and Solutions with Parsons Corporation in Alexandria, Virginia. I've been very active with IBTTA in a variety of roles, and I'm excited to be your moderator today as evidenced by my Tesla coil in the background. It's gonna give us some inspiration, I think. If you're not familiar with IBTTA, we're the global organization that represents the owners and operators of toll facilities and the businesses that serve them. One of IBTTA's priorities is to provide a platform for sharing knowledge and expertise on a range of relevant topics affecting the operations and governance of the worldwide tolling industry. Today's webinar has been developed by two of the five subcommittees of the Emerging Technologies Committee. You'll hear more about these two committees in a moment. I'd encourage you to check the IBTTA website to learn about all of the work of the five subcommittees and to get involved. You may have attended other virtual events presented by the Emerging Technology Subcommittees. This one is focused on the convergence of CASE, and we'll talk about CASE and innovation. Cases, toll organizations are facing a barrage of change in the way people commute, the way we do business, new technologies, many of which will disrupt and transform our industry, creating both risk and opportunity. Navigating the current landscape requires vision, agility, an inclination to take chances, and above all else, a willingness to evolve. Organizations that foster this type of culture will be best prepared to succeed and survive in the new technology-driven transportation paradigm. Today, you'll hear from two subcommittee chairs followed by three experts who will explore how organizations are structured to manage the innovation and how CASE, which is Connected, Automated, Shared, and Electric Vehicles, and we'll get into that in a bit, have the potential to change the way we plan, design, construct, operate, maintain, and most importantly, fund surface transportation. Our presenters will highlight why embracing innovation in case technology now is important for toll agencies. They'll also discuss the ways case technology could transform our industry and how our industry is engaging the automotive and manufacturers, technology companies, and government agencies. Before I turn the webinar over to our panelists, I'd like to go over some logistics for this webinar and explain how to engage with the panelists. The webinar will last 90 minutes. There will be five total presenters. All participants are in listen and view only mode. We encourage you to ask questions via the chat button at the bottom of your screen. Please address your questions to all panelists and attendees. That way we can all see your question and we'll, we'll try to get the responses back to you. Please note that you need to use the pull down menu to get to the panelists and attendees so that all of the participants can see your questions. Presenters will try to answer questions throughout the event and we'll be addressing your questions at the end of all the presentations. We are also recording this webinar. It will be posted on the IBTTA website. Let's begin with the five committee subchairs. So this is the Emerging Technology Committee is the umbrella. And under that we have the five subcommittees. The big data subcommittee is chaired by Marwan Mahdi of CDM Smith. The blockchain subcommittee is chaired by Matt Milligan of Milligan Partners. Uh, CASE is chaired by Lev Pinellas of Transurban and Lev will be joining us today. The Innovation Subcommittee is chaired by Jeff Daly of Central Texas Regional Mobility Authority, and he'll be with us today. And the Tolling and Customer Management uh, Subcommittee is chaired by Shannon Swank with Plus Pass. Uh, I look forward to meeting all of you in person again soon, but in the meantime, I hope you enjoy this exciting webinar. Uh, but before I turn the event over to Jeff Daly, and uh, Lev Pinellas, let's start with a quick poll. So can we bring up the poll? So among the things um, that we talk about a lot is connected vehicles. And with respect to this poll, the question is, in 2025, what number of new vehicles are the, will be sold that are connected vehicles? And I see we're getting a lot of good responses here. Uh, many people think it's gonna be pretty high, getting a, getting a broad range of responses. And in this context, I think that 
we want to talk about it in terms of, you know, it's not necessarily DSRC or cellular V2X. It's, uh, it's will your vehicle be connected? So I see uh, the polling slowing down a little bit. Uh, I'm ready to get your last votes in. And here we go. Someone shared. Okay, so you can see it's pretty broadly spread across the uh, across the, the guesses. I guess at this point, I think when Brennan talks, he'll be uh, from Ford Motor Company. I'll introduce him in a bit. He'll be uh, interested to show you where Ford is going in this context. So, so let's go to uh, let's go to the speaker intro slide. Um, we'll come back to this in a little bit. I want to hang on to those results. Keep that in mind. So our first speaker is Jeff Daly. Jeff is the Deputy Executive Director at the Central Texas Regional Mobility Authority and the Chair of the Innovation Subcommittee. Jeff has more than 35 years of public and private sector executive management experience in transportation and other infrastructure, including toll highway, toll managed lanes, P3, program management, toll and facility operations, maintenance and innovation and emerging uh, mobility technologies. Next, we'll hear from Lev Pinellas. Lev is with Transurban and is the chair of the CASE subcommittee. Lev is director of innovation for Transurban North America, where he oversees the strategy and implementation of emerging technology programs, including new intelligent transportation systems and smart mobility solutions on Transurban's North American toll roads. We'll then move our panel to our panel and we'll hear from Brian Kelly, who's the chief technology officer for the Ohio Turnpike and Infrastructure Commission, where he is working on the Ohio Turnpike Toll Modernization Project, and as well as working on future technology on the road, autonomous and connected vehicles, electric vehicles, and smart mobility. So I think Brian will bring some great perspective for us today. After Brian, we'll, we'll talk with Brennan Hamilton of Ford Motor Company, Brennan is the Ford Toll Advanced Product and Business Owner for Ford Enterprise Connectivity. In this role, he identifies projects and partnerships to advance Ford's vision of connected vehicles interacting with toll infrastructure. So I'm very excited to have Brennan here today, a representative from the auto industry, giving us some insight as to what's going on there. Our final speaker is Thomas Greiner. Thomas is responsible for the innovation initiatives at Aspenag in Vienna, Austria. So uh, he'll bring a European and Austrian uh, perspective. Uh, he wants to bring Aspenag to the forefront of innovative uh, mo road motorway operators. And to do this, he uses his international experience um, and he has worked in Asia. So uh, I think it's gonna be great for Thomas to bring us some uh, international experience to the panel and talk about what's going on uh, in Europe for us. So now it's my pleasure to turn the floor over to Jeff Daly uh, with Central Texas Regional Mobility Authority or CTRMA. Uh, Jeff, why don't you go ahead and take it away? Thank you, Joe. Um, is everything showing okay here? I got a block. Yep, it looks good. Okay. All right. Well, thanks and good morning, everybody. Um, so yeah, I'm the uh, subcommittee chair for the strategies for uh, innovation and technology. Uh, we started last year, had a good sized group. Uh, I think it was about 30 people and we've grown to 50 this year. But what I wanted to do was give you an overview. What we came up with last year, we, uh, we were tasked with coming up with strategies for organizations if they wanna really start moving forward with innovation and embracing it in the organization and also looking to the technologies, how would that fit together? And so we came up with um, some guidelines and um, one was we need to have a, a pretty much a list or a matrix that shows a spectrum of all the new technologies and innovations that are out there and identify them. You wanna categorize them. And then also what is their readiness? What's their applicability to tolling? So that's one element. But then how do you handle that? How do you then move forward and, and uh, move forward with innovation in your agency? So that's the next box. And without question, you gotta have leadership commitment. And that's gotta permeate from top to bottom in an organization to really move forward. You have to have dedicated resources. Um, and then we've seen in our initial scan that it, it varies a lot. And I'll talk a little bit more about that. 
you have to have an agile organization going from procurement to contracting to project management to the actual technical development. And there's different, a lot of different flavors in that aspect. Then there's a technology and resource plan. And then you have to have data and analytics in order to you know, determine how effective the organization is and how effective the new emerging technology is. But the real force multiplier in that is connecting yourself into the region and the private sector. Without question, the private sector delivers our, our products for us as far as toll agencies. Um, so you've got to tie them into the early stages of, of development and consideration, um, tying yourself into a regional, state, and federal task force. Uh, there's been a lot of them out there connected, autonomous vehicle task force, a technology task force. It's amazing how much information you can get out of that if you participate. Um, and then that those also bring a lot of the private sector there. Um, reaching beyond the uh, IBTTA, you want to be working with ITS America, um, you know, the TRBs, the uh, ASHTOs. You're going to be, we're going to be reaching outside of our no, normal toll industry because we are crossing over into different technologies outside of what we had, what we've been managing over the years. And then researchers with uh, you know, universities and such. And then the end result, we're all striving for customer satisfaction, greater mobility and business efficiency. So it's pretty much common sense. Uh, let's move it forward. Okay, so this year, um, our focus on innovation capacity, and that's how organizations manage it, um, was to drill down into more details. And we wanted to identify some case studies of the organizations, and that's both private and public. And we did that. We sent out a survey. Um, we got, and the survey was targeted primarily to the participants in the that in the innovation um, emerging technologies committee and a few outside of that. So it was a little bit slanted toward those that are really interested and 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 committed toward this um, to find out what people are doing, how they're set up and what, what they're planning to do. So again, you know, the, the commitment is, is key, top to bottom. And without that, it's not gonna go anywhere. And it permeates all aspects in the culture of your organization. Overall, uh, we saw a lot, but for the most part, organizations were set up that, the, that there's no real structured approach. It's each department was expected to bring innovation. And then that was in, baked into the budget there's also a trend going on now where you're starting to see chief innovation officers um, and chief technology officers and a focused staff to, to really be focusing on, on this new emerging technology. Um, the use of data and analytics is also another one that's, that's developing. I and mean, you hear a lot, Marwan Mahdi is working on big data, but there's several layers. This is a wide ranging uh, topic and it's very complicated, but you gotta have data and gotta have good analytics to, to find out how well your business is doing. Innovation, innovative procurement practices, there's a few unsolicited proposals. There, there's a lot of people thinking about that, but for the most part, it's people are adopting more agile or flexible contracting and project management practices. They're looking at unsolicited proposals uh, to be a part of their tools. Um, and then, there's starting to be a lot more real world technology demonstration projects. And that's something you're going to hear more of. Again, no, no, there's no one size fits all. Each agency approaches it differently, but the trend is toward having dedicated high level um, leadership and technical people to start focusing that those in, in the agencies. And the next part I'll talk about, there's a good reason why, because there's going to be a lot of change over the next 10 years. So the technology matrix, we also focused on um, the use cases for this technology. There's a lot of technology out there, but you wanna make sure it has a good cost benefit use, use case and try to identify the trends. Um, and so one of the, out, some of the outcomes of this were, you know, again, it, it, you're hearing a lot about electric vehicles. There's a, not a lot out there right now, but there, it's gonna trend up quick. So what is the impact of the industry? I mean, if you're looking at the projections, um, I think there's about 8% of sales right now are electric or hybrid vehicles. 2025, that should be about 30%. And then more than 50% by 2030. So they're going to be a real force in, on our industry in a very short period of time. 
but there's a lot of old vehicles that are going to have to cycle out of this. But the bottom line, electric vehicles for the near term, you're looking at having, are we going to put charging stations on our roadways? Long term, you're talking, is there a way to do inductive charging in our pavement? And then also it leads to road user charges. Smartphone, third party tolling, uh, things, uh, products like Plus Pass, UpRoads, you're hearing more and more about that. So these are both uh, becoming, um, they're, they're, they're operational and they're on the road to being mainstream. Again, that's gonna be a, a big change because part of that third party uh, tolling is gonna involve automakers and you'll hear a little bit more about that a little bit later in this. 5G cellular, uh, the phones are coming out. We've got a lot of, uh, there, there's spot locations so the phones are going to be fairly advanced here soon as far as your, your access to 5G, but the transportation industry, it's got a ways to come. It's in the testing phase, there's prototypes, but it's probably in the five to 10 year range before it becomes mainstream. Artificial intelligence and machine learning. There's a lot of opportunity for the toll industry when it comes to chat box and the customer service aspect, but also becoming operational are, is the ability to use this connected vehicle data vehicles as sensors and combining it with the roadway sensors that you have, you can actually use that as instant detection information that can come back and tell you what's going on in your roadway. Um, you know, then the next thing is sensor fusion, the connected vehicles. These are all starting to become operational. So within five years, we should start to really have a realization of what, what we can do with connected vehicles, both putting information into the vehicles for the drivers to give location-based information. And then finally, the subsurface aspect, um, this is for the engineers out there, dielectric, dielectric profiling, um, a, a way to detect and map the thickness of pavement, what's going on with pavement, and then subsurface electrical resist resistivity mapping to be able to map out um, cars features or uh, other things that are underground that have add a lot of risk for construction. So these are some of the trends that we thought were priority and focused here. You've probably heard a lot about them. Uh, the bottom line is you're gonna have a lot of change out there. Again, connected vehicle technology becoming operational within five years. Um, dramatic mobility and toll technology changes in the next 10 years. This is the main reason why toll agencies, transportation departments in general are gonna to have to really embrace the, the changes that are coming up over the next 10 years and put the resources in the innovation aspect to help manage that. With that, Joe, I'll turn it back over to you. Great, thank you. Uh, thanks, thanks, Jeff. Uh, great stuff. Uh, we do need a structure in place to be able to uh, accept innovation. I mean, there's a ton of it out there. There's a ton of technology change out there and we need uh, processes and structures and mechanisms to you know, try to make it mainstream. So. Uh, we're going to allow to chat, and I'm just going to briefly reshare the results before I turn it over to Lev. Uh, so I, I think everyone can now see these results, but we're getting questions about connected vehicles. We'll come back to this at the end of your discussion, Lev. But you can see that we have about, about um, the split is about 30%. It, it's, it's pretty, I would say it's pretty much a straight line, 18, 30, 21, 30. Um, there's no preponderance at either end of the spectrum for 2025. And as Brennan talked about, Ford uh, has you know 3G, 4G devices in their vehicle at almost 100% installation rate, but I'll let him talk about that more. Uh, with that, again, thanks, Jeff. I want to turn it over to Lev Pinellas with Transurban, uh, who runs our Connected Automated Shared Electric uh, Working Group. So Lev, uh, take yourself off mute and please share your slides. Joe, Joe, can you see my slides? I, I, uh, I put it in presentation mode. I, I can see you. Yeah, I can see your slides. Go ahead. Okay. You see them as maximized now, right? Yes, sir. Yep. Okay. Uh, th thank you very much, uh, Joe. Thank you very much, IBTTA, for the opportunity to present. Um, so 
as, as was mentioned, uh, I'm Lev Pinellas. Um, I'm director of innovation for Transurban, and I also have had the privilege for the last three and a half years to serve as the chairperson of IBTK's Connected Automated Shared and Electric Vehicles Working Group. Um, so just a quick history. Uh, why did we find this? Uh, why did we found this working group? Well, I think we found that um, more and more uh, in, within the tolling conferences that we were having, there was discussion about emerging technology and in particular connected and automated type of technologies. So I think we wanted to find a, a home for people that had this interest within our industry to share ideas, to collaborate, uh, you know, in, in, in this space. And so we can kind of find each other. So we've had a good journey over the last three and a half years. Um, and I, I think for me, one of the key takeaways uh, has been that I think a lot of toll facility operators, um, you know, we view ourselves as having a premium product that tries to differentiate itself from all the other roadways and, and, and create a, um, you know, safer, uh, faster, more efficient experience uh, uh, for the motorist. And in addition to, you know, to all the technology that we have at, at our roadway, it creates a very good uh, platform to pilot uh, connected automated shared electric technologies on our roadways, but also to potentially be uh, early adopters uh, in the space as well. So um, stemming from that, uh, you know, baseline, one of our fo key focus areas for the calendar year of 2020 uh, has been a more uh, nuanced topic and a white paper we are almost uh, completed and uh, have, have almost completed developing. So this, this white paper focuses on the impact of these technologies uh, on a topic that's uh, near and dear to all of our hearts, which is our tolling systems. So how, how, how will CASE actually impact the, the tolling systems? So that's been the objective of the white paper that we've been working on. In terms of the process that, we, the process that we've been following, we of course didn't want to start from scratch. There's been a lot of good work that's been done by IBTTA um, in, in, in years past, including last calendar year, where the Emerging Technologies Committee developed five white papers. And then there was also work done by the uh, platinum sponsors to de develop uh, mobility as a service uh, primer as well. So we, we started by reviewing that. And then following, uh, following that review, uh, we conducted uh, uh, many uh, interviews with tolling industry or emerging technology experts to further hone in on the, the key trends that are going to be impacting the tolling system and gather the thoughts. We further analyzed the emerging trends of technologies, such as the ones listed here, which, you know, which is fair, basically analogous to the case technologies we've been talking about here. So then we took these trends and overlaid them on top of the tolling system model and um, try to basically assess all right, what's coming in the near term, me medium term, and, and long term in terms, of, in terms of impacts. So putting that all together, uh, we're finalizing the, the final version of the white paper this month, and we'll be submitting that to, uh, you know, to James, uh, as the chairman of the Emerging Technologies Committee, and, and to IBTTA for, um, you know, for publication, hopefully here in the, in the near term. I'll jump into the, um, I think the crux of what we found uh, of, of the white paper, and this more or less summarizes, uh, you know, the current uh, views on which trends are the primary trends that are gonna be impacting the tolling system. So uh, in terms of the rows, uh, these are kind of the seven key trends that, uh, that, that, that we identified uh, through our uh, research in terms of what's gonna be impacting. And across the top for the columns, this is effectively um, reflecting the tolling system or the tolling operations process from, the, from what happens at the roadside all the way into the back office. And then finally, the last column is focused on the impact timing. So when will these trends uh, start to impact the tolling system and the requirements and the design and the, and the operation? So really quickly, just in a couple minutes, uh, just to run through what we have here. So 
first of all, mobile payments, whether smartphone or maybe increasingly um, aftermarket or built in, uh, in, in into the vehicle. You're seeing a lot of these kind of applications where you can put in the license plate, you can have your GPS uh, track now coming to market. And obviously the tolling system uh, needs to be uh, interoperable uh, with, with, these, with these platforms. They're shifting vehicle owner trends. So this touches on things like um, ride hailing and ride sharing and how the more and more the users of our facilities are not necessarily the registered owners uh, of, of, of the vehicles. So there may be some changes that are required in terms of account management. Road user charging is a trend that's accelerating in the country and go, having gone live in places like Utah and Oregon now and coming to the East Coast in a production uh, uh, fashion as well. So obviously huge parallels to tolling and as RUC becomes more prevalent, I think there's a very natural question to ask, you know, what, what impact will it have on also detecting toll road travel? Integration of tolling and traffic back office systems so in particular, we had a lot of discussion about these connected vehicle-based data sets that are becoming available from OEMs or big tech companies and how that's becoming integrated into our traffic management systems of today, but also how could they impact the tolling of, of, of tomorrow in terms of, for example, proactive dynamic pricing of our facilities. There's, uh, of course, the more the... Um, short range communications that uh, are gonna be built in into the vehicles, whether it's cellular V2X or, or, or maybe still some legacy DSRC. And there's already some standards that are being developed to, uh, to allow toll transactions to happen over these channels as well. Enforcement, in the, in the, this is kind of towards the bottom, please keep in mind, we're getting into the longer term. Enforcement uh, may increasingly be handled by the third parties you know, whether it's the connected vehicles, road user charging, or mobile-based mobile, mobile -based tolling, uh, as they take more and more of a potential lead in uh, capturing the tolls, they also may take more lead on enforcement as well. And then finally, this whole notion of managed lanes or express lanes potentially being in the future dedicated for connected and automated travel. And as that happens, uh, that's actually a bigger trend but of course the tolling system could get impacted as well. And this is, this is our longest term trend. So with that kind of quick summary, I look forward, you know, we're gonna be finalizing, like I said, the white paper, we'll be submitting that into IBTTA and I'll be looking forward uh, to you all getting access to that and hopefully getting good use out of that as well. And with, with that, Joe, that's the end of my presentation. Thank you. Great, thank you, Lev. <clears throat> uh, so before we move on, to the next panel, uh, to our panelists, uh, I'd like to uh, share a poll, uh, a new poll. So what we're talking about here is that, so we've talked a little bit about third parties. We've talked about uh, tolling over your cell phone. So this is just a, a question of the audience. Uh, by 2025, how many toll, of the, what percent of the toll transactions will be processed by a device not issued by a toll agency? Because historically what we've relied on are transponders, and license plate recognition is the backup, but we, you know, we're out here looking at connected vehicles. I know there are applications out there to do a, a tolling application on your cell phone. So we're talking about, you know, what's the time frame for us to try to uh, move to these uh, alternative forms of toll payment? Um, if you want to get in, by the way, the, so Jeff and Lev uh, chair their committees. Um, you know, we're always looking for new people to help us review uh, material in the process. So uh, these are ongoing activities. I know Lev holds a, I participate with Lev on a monthly uh, case event where we review uh, lots of interesting material. So if you're looking for an opportunity to get involved with his group or Jeff's group, uh, we welcome that. So let's take a look. <clears throat> so, and I will share results. So right now, and we'll come back to this. Uh, it looks like a pretty healthy percentage. We think about 30% of toll transactions will come from uh, those transponders, cell phones, connected vehicles, not issued by a toll road operator. Uh, so that's very interesting results. We'll talk a little bit more about that and uh, as we get into the panelists. So with that, um, I want, and we will talk about AV adoption. I know I saw your question, Tim McGuckin, we'll come back to that. With that, I wanna turn it over to our first panelist, 
which is uh, Brian Kelly, who's with the Ohio Turnpike. He's the CTO. Uh, Brian, if you'll take yourself off mute and uh, share your slides, it looks like you're sharing. Uh, take it away, Brian. Thanks, Joe. Uh, it's an honor and privilege to be here this after, this morning and afternoon sharing with everyone uh, the perspective from the, the Ohio Turnpike. Um, we have a very uh, interesting history in terms of innovation. Going back to 1984, we entered into a telco agreement, uh, a company wanting to install fiber along the Ohio Turnpike, uh, wanted to use our right of way. So we said, sure. And we reached an agreement where they were able to install their fiber, give us a, a monthly payment for use of our right of way for their fiber, and then hand off to us 24 pairs of our own fiber, uh, which has enabled us to fiber up uh, 55 of our facilities, toll plazas, service plazas, maintenance buildings, and our administrative building campus. So today in, in 2020, uh, we find ourselves fully fibered along all 241 miles of the Ohio Turnpike from Indiana to Pennsylvania. And we're able to leverage that fiber uh, for our uh, tolling system, as well as our business operations and the future technology that we're talking about uh, here today in this webinar. At the Ohio Turnpike, we drive innovation through our strategic objectives, and, and we have uh, five strategic objectives that we've identified. And we've done this uh, through a, a management group consisting of our uh, executive director, our, our directors and our, our managers uh, within the Ohio Turnpike getting together uh, through a strategic retreat that we had about a year ago. We identified these five guiding principles, uh, improve safety, improve quality of life, improve customer experience, maintain excellent system conditions, and maintain strong financial stewardship. And our mission is to be the industry leader in providing safe and efficient transportation services to our customers, communities, and our partners. And we drive innovation through three different task teams, an internal technology task team, an external technology task team, and a people team as well. And this is very important to our, our culture. So we're focusing on what we're doing internally, what we're doing externally on the road, and focusing probably on our most critical asset to our operations. And that is our, our nearly 900 some uh, Ohio Turnpike employees who really uh, ensure the operation of our, our toll road 24 by seven by 365. And so ideas related to innovation uh, often come through these task forces or to these task forces. They work on, on um, researching and coming up with uh, the solutions that we'll move forward with and then overseeing the, the implementation of that innovation as well. And it's really important that for innovation to succeed within any organization, that it be driven from the top of the organization. And for Zan Ahmed, our executive director, uh, really pushes us towards innovation and asking a lot of questions. You know, uh, why are we doing this this way? Why can't we do it another way? And, and really encouraging us to think out of the box and how we can improve ourselves, leveraging technology, new business processes, and ideas to, to, to improve our operations, uh, increase safety on our road, and most importantly, to also to improve our, our customer service. Some of our projects that I'd like to share with you in, in the time that we have this morning um, are projects that are leveraging futuristic technology. And today, things are going to flip dramatically in transportation and in tolling. And so when you sit back, uh, I encourage you to think about where you are with your entity. Um, are you just sitting, waiting, um, kind of wondering how innovation will impact your operation, your entity, your road? Are you just, are you just wondering? Um, are you in a second phase, which I would say is research 
Are you researching, educating yourself, trying to understand the things that we're talking about here in terms of emerging technology and innovation? Or at the higher level, the third stage, are you actually doing it? Are you um, deploying proof of concept projects? Are you partnering up um, with auto manufacturers or technology providers to test uh, innovation and technology? And, and we at the Ohio Turnpike are certainly at that higher level. Uh, back in 2017, we worked on establishing a, a DSRC 50 mile section of, of the Ohio Turnpike to kind of use as a DSRC testing environment. Uh, we were able to connect 38 of our uh, medium to heavy duty trucks uh, to the DSRC network. Uh, we were able to get operational data from those trucks, their location, speed, direction of travel, snow plow up, snow plow down, salt spreader on, salt spreader off, the rate of salt coming out. Um, we we're also able to install a human interface, an iPad within those vehicles. And through that, we could send incident data, work zone data, curve speed data, and weather data to those vehicles. This network also allowed us to pick up private connected vehicles and get the basic safety message part one data from them, their presence, their direction of travel, and their speed. Um, and our goal is trying to better understand how this technology can benefit not only us, but our customers and how we can best prepare ourselves for the connected vehicles that are going to be taking the road in great numbers uh, very soon as we'll learn uh, later on from Ford. Um, we've also partnered up with an auto manufacturer. We, we found that to be a critical component of testing innovation. So we partnered up with Ford and the first phase of, of that partnership was to uh, establish an application that could connect to a smartphone, connect it into the NSYNC infotainment center in a Ford vehicle. And for Ford to be able to pick up uh, traffic incident information uh, from the Ohio Turnpike and then send that information directly to the NSYNC infotainment screen within the vehicle. And we completed this successfully um, about a month and a half ago and tested that out on, on uh, four Ohio Turnpike maintenance vehicles. We're also looking at solar energy. Um, how can we leverage solar, solar energy to enter into a partnership with an energy provider or a private entity, uh, build a solar field, maybe a solar carport uh, at one of our facilities possibly a toll plaza or a service plaza, and either partially or fully power that facility, allow the service provider to sell off any um, energy that we create that we do not need, um, and get a better understanding of how solar can be leveraged on a, a toll road. And certainly as we give thought to electric vehicles and how we're going to charge uh, not only passenger vehicles, but commercial vehicles on the toll road, um, understanding how solar can be leveraged to uh, provide power, uh, very important. So we're getting ready to issue an RFI, um, which will lead to probably a request for qualifications and then an RFP and proceed on a project. We're also getting much more into EV charging. We deployed EV charging stations at several of our service plazas along the Ohio Turnpike. We'll be expanding that uh, in 2021. Um, and we're also beginning to research and understand in-road charging. And we've partnered up with Aspire, uh, which was formerly known as Select from Utah State University, and starting to look at maybe a proof of concept project where we'd actually do in-road charging of electric vehicles uh, on the Ohio Turnpike. We've also, realize that we shouldn't be alone as we move forward with innovation, that we really need to partner up. So we partnered up with a number of different uh, agencies and entities across the United States. One of those is a regional collaborative, and that is the Smart Belt Coalition, consisting of Michigan, Ohio, PA. It includes the transportation uh, departments from each of those states. It includes the uh, Pennsylvania Turnpike, as well as 
a number of academic institutions such as the University of Michigan, uh, Kaplan University in Michigan, Ohio State University, and Carnegie Mellon and Penn State. And so through this, um, we're looking for different types of innovative projects that we can under undertake as a region. And one project that's getting ready to launch next week is a vehicle platooning demo uh, for semi-autonomous trucks. We'll have two semi-autonomous trucks um, from locomation uh, traveling from Pennsylvania through Ohio on the Ohio Turnpike and then on up into Michigan, uh, carrying food for food banks and dropping off the, that, that food um, cargo as they go. Um, and we're doing this to not only understand the technology of truck platooning, but the impact of it on our road and how a trucking company will have to work with multiple states. So we're, we're monitoring the regulation process that, that the trucking company has had to go through to adhere to regulations in different states, uh, different requirements in different states, and how they've had to go through the process to get approval uh, to operate on our, our roadways. So that's a very interesting project that um, we're, we're really uh, eager to, to see that move forward next week and then to evaluate the success of, of that uh, endeavor. We've also partnered up with uh, Drive Ohio, which is the one-stop shop for connected autonomous vehicles in the state of Ohio. And we're also very active, I think, as most of you know, in IBTTA. Um, and we found that, that relationship uh, to be very valuable as well. Learning from all of you and sharing with all of you um, has been an important part of um, propelling innovation forward for the Ohio Turnpike. So with that, I turn it back over to you, Joe. Thank you. Great. Hey, um, Brian, great uh, presentation. Appreciate it. I, a couple questions. So on that uh, commercial vehicle platooning, are you doing that entirely with autonomous sensors? Or are you relying on uh, connectivity between the vehicles as well? And I guess the other question is, is uh, it's, I assume the policy regulations you're trying to deal with are follow distances between trucks. I mean, are you, are you trying to make that shorter than what's currently accepted or not? I'm just maybe a couple of comments on that. No, the, the regulations and requirements that we're most concerned with are, are the requirements that each state has related to um, autonomous or semi-autonomous vehicles operating on their roadway. So each state has a, a different um, perspective, different requirements. Um, and so the trucking company that's doing the demo has to go through a different process for each state, um, which kind of replicates what trucking companies will have to do across uh, all of the, the 48 continuous uh, you, you know, states in, in, in the United States. Um, so we're looking at that. Um, but um, you know, we're, we are, this, this demo will be a, a very safe demo operator on our road. So we're, we're, we're testing out the technology, but um, you know, also focused on the regulations, but, but most importantly, uh, focused on, on safety because we want um, this to be uh, a safe demo, not only for the drivers, but also more importantly for our customers who will be unaware that there are semi-autonomous trucks uh, traveling next to them, ahead of them and behind them uh, on the, uh, the state interstates and, and, and turnpikes in Pennsylvania and Ohio. Okay, great. Hey, th thank you again, Brian. Excellent presentation. Um, and we'll, uh, there's some questions for you in the chat. Uh, we'll, we'll get to those. You can answer them in the chat if you'd like. Next up, we have uh, Brennan Hamilton with Ford Motor Company. So Brennan, uh, if you could uh, take your uh, self off mute and share your screen. Okay, we'll do. Okay, so I'm Brennan Hamilton. I'm with Ford Motor Company. Um, my organization is Enterprise Connectivity, which is a group in uh, Ford Motor Company with many, many thousands of people, let's say, in Enterprise Connectivity. And Enterprise Connectivity is really around the, the connectivity between our vehicles and either infrastructure or the back end. So 
as you can surmise from the number of people working on enterprise connectivity, it's very in, important for Ford Motor Company. So Ford, Ford Motor Company since uh, 2019 model year, like I put in the in the in the chat, is almost 100% connected. So we believe in building out the future. So we've been putting connectivity in our vehicles since around 2016 which is modems. I know that we were talking about short range and long range connectivity. So we'll, we'll talk about modems as long range uh, connectivity because they do require um, infrastructure. So cell phone towers, backends, et cetera, uh, to operate correctly. So we've been deploying those since around 2016 and then 2019 is really when it's been ramped up. Ford Motor Company over the last, uh, year and a half basically, well, a little bit more than that, almost two years now, has, has committed to cellular vehicle to everything deployment. So we're the first automaker that uh, committed to deploy CV to X on all our new vehicles, pending a favorable regulatory environment starting in the 2022 calendar year. So as we look at that regulatory environment, um, Right now, um, as you all know, there is an election coming up. If you haven't noticed all the ads and uh, SMSs coming out, uh, in on your phones. So we anticipate some movement on uh, CV to X. Uh, we're hopeful that the proposal that the FCC put, put forth where uh, there's 30 megahertz of bandwidth available um, will be adopted. And we're confident that we can deploy um, exciting safety use cases, as well as other features for our uh, customers using that technology. I'd just like to say that um, we saw Brian Kelly was uh, talking about some work that we've done with him and you know, Ohio Turnpike is a great partner to work with. They're very forward looking. And the reason that Ford Motor Company is in uh, IBTTA is, is really because um, you're a, uh, pretty fast moving group for uh, semi-government organizations. So you're looking at the, the future of technology, which you, you can see from this webinar. Um, you're exploring uh, where not only what the current state is, but what the next, uh, the next states might be. We saw Lev go through talking about where we might be in zero to three years and three to five, you know, and then out to 10. Uh, we, we believe that connectivity is coming way faster than you anticipate. I mean, it's kind of under, it's kind of under the radar right now. Um, as you know, I've been promoting it through IBTTA, but we're going to really see it take off once we um, get that short range communication spectrum defined by the FCC. Another great partner that we've been working with is uh, CTRMA. They're a great forward looking partner where uh, I'm gonna show in a little bit a video that we did on a demonstration with what CV to X could be used for um, when it comes to infrastructure, especially in tolling use cases. And I will say that uh, we're not only in the connectivity uh, space, Ford is also deploying automated vehicles in um, a couple of cities, Austin, Miami and uh, Washington DC. And we're gonna see more of those. I mean, although there's a lot of automation on vehicles right now, as we look at level one and maybe level two autonomy, as we get into level three autonomy, where vehicles are taking more of the workload off the driver, um, we're gonna see those vehicles on, on the roads really soon. Well, you're seeing some of them around the level, level two. Level three is, uh, is coming sooner. And as you may know, level th three still requires the driver to take over if the vehicle can't figure out what to do. But level four is uh, what's been being explored by Ford in those cities that I mentioned. So those vehicles are gonna be hitting the roadway soon and they do have interesting use cases when it comes to uh, technology. So as I get, I'll get to the next slide here, I'm gonna stop sharing and pull up a, a video. Some of you might have seen it in my presentation with um, 
the IPTA annual meeting, but many of you may not have. So I'm gonna bring that up for you to watch right now. As more toll roads are added across the United States, tolling agencies are looking for ways to simplify the process for customers and for themselves. By using cellular vehicle to everything technology, or CV2X, Ford is building an engaging and simplified customer tolling experience. Ford has previously committed to bringing CV2X to our new vehicles beginning in 2023. Of course, developing a feature that merges in-vehicle connectivity with on-road infrastructure can create challenges. It requires combining back-end technology with the physical hardware located on the roadside. This challenge was made more difficult because Ford's connected vehicle team is located in Dearborn, Michigan while the final demonstration site is in Austin, Texas. Ford's emerging technology team used a custom-built simulator that allowed team members to model real-world tolling situations in a virtual environment. This advanced technology provides accurate representations of testing situations and allows for a rapid iteration that wouldn't be possible if the teams had to travel for each round of testing. Once the viability and accuracy of the tolling feature was confirmed in a simulated environment, Ford team members were then able to perform real-world testing at two test tracks in Michigan. Using both sites allowed the team to analyze the tolling feature under controlled, realistic conditions and make changes as needed. After nearly a year of development, the team shipped an F-150 from Michigan to Texas and now we're able to see this new feature in action. This is Katie, a Ford employee based out of Austin, Texas. Katie's going to take us on a journey along two Texas toll roads, Highway 45 Southwest and the Mopac Freeway. She's going to show us how Ford's CV to X tolling capabilities make her drive easy and hassle-free. Katie starts by accessing the fixed rate toll section of Highway 45. Her F-150 alerts her to the upcoming toll road, toll road ahead. and when she passes the roadside unit, her vehicle initiates the charge to her credit card, which she has already set up in her Ford owner account. Account charged. Next, Katie heads onto a metered road to experience road usage charging. When she enters the metered section of road, Katie's sync display shows the per mile charge she'll incur, and the metering icon remains active while she's driving. Once she exits, the icon turns off, and when she parks the vehicle, she gets a notification of her total charge for that trip. To end her journey, Katie heads to downtown Austin. She starts on Cesar Chavez Street, going towards the Mopac Expressway, where she's alerted to the upcoming managed lanes. Toll road ahead. Her sync display shows her the current rates for each lane, and she chooses the express lane, knowing it'll save her time. Her F-150 confirms the charge for the express lane as she passes the gantry. Katie easily passes all the congested traffic before exiting at Far West Boulevard and receiving a final charge confirmation. Account charged. Thanks to Katie and the crew for helping make our Ford toll reveal a success in Austin. Okay. Oops. So as you can see, um, just to wrap up my portion, um, cv x although we, we showed a road usage charging uh, use case and we showed a tolling use case, is really uh, about smart vehicles in a smart world. So we're making the smart vehicles, other ma manufacturers are making the smart vehicles and you all are providing the smart world uh, for us to talk to. And it, as you can see from these demonstrations, that short range communication with um, CV to X is handy when you got scooters flying all over the place. It's also handy to provide your roadway users, um, your customers and our customers potentially 
valuable information like traveler information message messages around weather advisories, accidents, any kind of um, use restrictions on the roads, hurricane evacuations, there's all kinds of use cases. And as we see this short range communication being deployed, um, we're actively encouraging you to consider installing roadside equipment on your um, facilities, your roadways, in order to take advantage of that connectivity that we're going to be bringing to your roadways shortly. And uh, here's my contact information if anybody wants to get a hold of me. And I'd just like to thank uh, Lev and Joe for having me on. Thank you. Great, thanks, Brennan. Excellent presentation. I'm sure we're gonna have a lot of questions for you. Um, uh, our last presenter is uh, Thomas Greiner with Osphenog. So Thomas, uh, please take yourself off mute and share your screen. Thank you very much. This is Thomas speaking um, from Europe, from Asfinag from Europe. In, I live in Europe, in the middle of Europe, and there we have, uh, it's 6 p.m. about, so it's a kind of uh, nice evening for me. Time flows when it makes fun, so hopefully my presentation will do the same, that you get some new ideas of innovation, and so I will go some slides for you. My First slide uh, is our new, new vision of Asfinag. May let me add a sentence about Asfinag. Asfinag is the motorway and express the operator of whole Austria. That means the whole uh, high speed network, our roads belong to Asfinag and our main job is tolling as well as planning and building the, the streets for our customers. And here you see our new vision. It's really new. Uh, and this new vision has some new and I think quite of interesting parts because Asfinag, normally a toll operator, is now with this new vision going to a kind of mobility partner. So we think now that uh, when our customers make their way from A to B, that our network is an important part of it, but it's not the whole, it has not to be the whole part. And this is what our vision says. And the next uh, part is we have to be innovative. So that's a big, a big goal for me. I'm responsible for the innovation strategy in Asfinag. And of course, there is a good game for me because the vision also says to be innovative. And in the next slides, I will give you an overview of what innovation means and which influences uh, the new technology for toll system as well as case. Here you see our new core strategies. Um, with these new core strategies and our new vision, we will bring Asfinag to an innovative um, mobile partner. And my goal, and it's, it's similar to the goal, it's of course the same goal of our companies. Our, we want to be the most innovative uh, operator for a highway express network in Europe and maybe uh, all over the world, but we will do a, a short step with Europe. Uh, here you see our core strategies. I, I am responsible for this innovation strategy. It's marked with the, with the green cross. On the left uh, hand side, you see our newest uh, research project. Um, it deals with generating electricity with solar power. And in this project, we make some research how does this influences the toll system? How does this influences um, the case? Because the electric car, they need the energy. And the big question is where to get the energy. And I think this is a great idea to generate his own energy. And why make money only with tolling? Maybe in future, future means in the next two years, we are also a kind of um, energy company who sells energy by producing their own energy on our road networks. So this is one kind we are doing now. We will put a focus when we do innovation of um, in the big sentence of um, green energy and getting for our electric cars, our own energy. With this show, uh, with this slide, I will just pick up some fields of action what we are doing when we say we are an uh, we'll be doing innovation. 
And let me just talk about uh, some of the guide, guiding um, principles. Uh, on the left hand, you see the horizon of innovation. When we say innovation and when we say innovation and tolling or when we say innovation and case, everybody of us has, has his own picture in his mind, in his head. But what is innovation? And therefore we say we have to make uh, horizons of innovation that has all innovation needs a different kind, a different kind of plan and a different kind to put it on the road. And therefore we, we are talking about horizons of innovations. It makes a difference if you're talking about this, the, the, the car who is driving without a, a driver or on the other hand with photovoltaic. It's all innovation, but it needs a different way to act and a different way to put it on the road. Um, another part is um, if we are doing our innovation, how to make this more public? Because we need, as astronauts, we want to get as an uh, innovation company in the public. And therefore, we, we need new ways. And one way will be uh, why not starting an own television company? Why being a television company? So we will start a television company. It's called Astronaut Television. Why we're doing this? Because all our customers, our younger customers, when we say they are until age 25, they are not using to read a guideline or they're not using to go on an internet site to read something. They need, they need new channels. They need new channels, uh, for example, like TikTok or like Instagram. They want to consume videos. So to be innovative, we also have to go to this customer group. It's our future group, the young, youngest guys. And so we have to make an own broadcast format and uh, we go into astronaut television. And uh, the, the third part I will figure out is uh, which is the innovation for the future for an operator, which is the future of case and which is innovation in the toll system. We are living in such a moving time. I think the technology that we will use in maybe 10, 20 years is not yet born. So it maybe makes not sense to take this technology we are having now and putting it on the road. We, we need to get the right use of innovation. And by doing this, we need uh, the new technologies and applications. And now um, I will just make a short calculation with you because an important part is to being innovative, to think out of the box. Yeah? To think out of the box, it's easy says, but it's important that we do this to get an, a new idea of a future operator. And by doing this, uh, it's just uh, an, an, a nice calculator. I, I love this, maybe you, you have seen this before, but just to being up mind and think out of the box, if, if you're doing this calculation, it's, it's quite similar. Just do your own or you even can chat it, doesn't, doesn't matter. There will be no price or something like this. It's just to, for, for your mind, to get an idea what is innovation and, and to, if you see something and want to be innovative, then you have to think out of the box. And by doing this, if you make the calculation, I will uh, now display the right answer and show you what I mean with this example. Yeah, it's 30. Why 30? Because when you look on the first line, the, 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 the one is, a, is, in, is an 11 because there's nothing between. And that is what I mean. Being innovative also means changing your perspective. Changing your perspective means that the company you're working with has to make guidelines or they have to give a space, have to be give a space to be perspective. Otherwise, innovation will fail. Yeah, let me just uh, say some words to innovation. Um, as you remember before in the slides, I talked about the horizons of innovation. In our company, we will divide our innovations in the horizons model with three different horizons and are doing a classification of trends. So we say, is there a trend coming to our, who belongs to our core uh, business? Is it a kind of, we have to watch? So there's something far, far away, uh, maybe the flying drones to make it for transportation instead of a case car. Uh, this might be relevant, but with a low priority, so we have to watch about this. If there is something we have to think, that means a first point of, of contact. Uh, for example, you see here on the right hand, uh, the satellites or the drones, uh, the, this technology is here. 
So we have to, to think about it. Or is it a kind of act that's a trend? It's still here, but my company doesn't use it. So we have to bring it on the road when you, for example, by using solar power. And with this model, to make a classification of the three horizons, uh, we are able to have a view of all trends, but to take the right trends to the right time and make a business, business, uh, business with it. Here you also see some ongoing projects, uh, what we are using. What we are using. Uh, I heard before uh, also a colleague who is doing truck platooning was quite interesting. We are also putting the first ideas on that. So I'm just moving, yeah, sorry. Yes, just the, the, the last um, slide. Um, I had a kind of, of experience uh, in Asia about one year. It was very nice and awesome time for me. Um, and there I learned also about uh, how the Asian operator are doing, how they are tolling, how they make a kind of safety for the customers. And um, that was very interesting for me. And I am also using some tools there to getting it done for my company. And I learned uh, of, of the, the Asian guys there, it's not too little time that we have, but it's too much time that we do not use, that we do not use for innovation. And therefore, be brave, go for innovation and go for it. Uh, the future will be ours. Thank you very much and feel free to ask questions. Great. Th thank you, Thomas. Excellent presentation. I did want to ask one question about, just so I understand the uh, the carport, uh, the photovoltaic carport, is that you actually have solar panels above the roadway and you're generating <laughs> electricity? Is that, is yeah. that the uh, uh, on the one hand, to, to generating electricity, but there are some more advantages we will have. Because once you have a kind of a carport over the motorway, you need, and when the winter is coming in Austria, we used to have cold winters, we need uh, less maintenance to put the snow away. So it's also a cost topic. And the third main part is the sun in Austria, or I think in, as well as in the States, we have about 30, 40 degrees. So there's a kind of damage on our road. And with this cardboard, it's like your own car at home. You're, you're also putting it in a cardboard. You want to stand it outside. And that's the same ideas we are having now. The first topic is now making a research project. And then this is also in our strategy, we, we will have more demonstrator on our roads, putting the innovation on the road. That means in one year, yeah, at least one year, we will put this um, new system on a test field on our road. Do you have some specific purpose for the electricity or do you just sell it back to the grid or is it used for charging? Yeah. Is there um, yes, our main partner or main user is the, the tunnels. Yes, they're using very okay. much energy. So therefore we will use it, but on the next step also for the electricity, the electricity cost. Yeah. Excellent, excellent. Um, so uh, we've got about uh, 15 minutes left here and I wanna uh, open it up to some questions. I wanna thank all the panelists um, for uh, great, great presentations and a lot of insight for me. I know I learned a lot when I attend these things. Um, we're going to uh, launch our last poll. Uh, oh, I got a 401 error. Oh, can anybody see my poll? Okay, they can. So the question here is, we've talked a lot about electric vehicles, uh, improved miles per gallon vehicles. Uh, the, the risk here is that using the gas tax as a way to pay for road funding is a challenge. So many states are looking at going to it, uh, going to some form of road usage charging, uh, also known as vehicle miles traveled, uh, sometimes known as mileage based user fees. Anytime you hear any of those three expressions, they all pretty much mean the same thing. Um, in California, for instance, uh, Governor Newsom has signed an executive order that California will not permit the sale of non-electric vehicles starting in 2035. So it's a little ways out there, but in California, you need to uh, stop selling uh, internal combustion engine vehicles by 2035. So looking to uh, just give me your, give us your thoughts and I'm gonna end the polling and share the results. It looks like uh, you know, in 10 years, it's, I mean, this is probably pretty reasonable. 20 states will have adopted some form of program. I guess it, a, a lot will depend on if they find a hole in their state transportation budgets. I know that uh, 
in COVID in the past, if you look at what happened in say to collections in June of the, uh, for the highway trust fund, they were off like 30 to 40%. So that gives us a preview of what life could look like under a high uh, MPG vehicle environment, which is a good thing. It's good that we're getting more mileage out of our cars and converting to electric, but then it has these consequences of, of uh, affecting the tolling. So, so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, ask some questions here. Oh, Joe, by, by road use charging, vehicle miles travel, uh, mileage-based user fees, you mean something that is not a gas tax, correct? Yes, I mean, not the gas tax. I mean, today, average state collects 30 cents per gallon. The federal government collects 18.4 cents a gallon. So you pay about 48.4 cents a gallon and all. Uh, but as electrics take to the roadway, um, you won't be able to collect that money. So uh, one of the things that we're getting... Okay, that's bad. Okay, one of the things that we're getting is, uh, what is the what do the panelists think? Uh, and you can each comment, uh, take yourself off mute and comment. You know, we had fairly mixed results on percentage of connected vehicles from the uh, from the audience. What do the panelists think the percentage of connected vehicles will be, say, in five years? Uh, maybe Brennan, you can start. Yeah. I put mine in the comments. I was going with uh, I was going with seventy plus percent. I mean, that's new vehicles. Um, I'm assuming we're talking coming out of the showroom. We see a lot of manufacturers, including um, embedded motives, uh, modems. It's especially strong in commercial vehicles where there's a lot of use cases out there uh, for productivity. So basically, if your van is your livelihood, then you want, you want that van connected and able to take care or uh, take advantage of apps. So as we look at short range communication by 2025, I'd say yeah, maybe 20, maybe 20%, maybe 25% um, given a uh, favorable ruling by the FCC. And when you talk about, so, so the notice of proposed rulemaking you're referring to is from the FCC for the spectrum. Uh, do you anticipate a NPRM from the National Highway Transportation Safety Administration for vehicle to vehicle safety? Is that, uh, I, and I, if you can't say, I'm okay with that too, Brennan. So, so I'm not gonna speculate, but we haven't seen one. Okay, so, thank you. Given the time that's left on the clock before the, uh, the election, I'd say we're not gonna see one. Okay. Brian, did you want to comment? Yeah, I was just gonna say, I, I pretty much uh, agree with Brennan in terms of um, you know, 70%, I mean, um, you know, we, we live in the age of consumerization um, and the consumers have smartphones, smart devices. They wanna be able to connect those in their vehicles and take advantage of what that connectivity offers. So, um, you know, this is something that's rapidly moving forward with in terms of adoption, both by uh, the auto manufacturers and the consumers. So it's something that we really as, as toll road operators need to put on our radar, as Brennan said, and figure out how we're gonna leverage this technology to improve the safety on our roads and the delivery of services to our customers who will have the vehicles that can take advantage of this technology. Hey, Jeff, Joe, this is Jeff Daly. Um, just gonna weigh in on that too. Um, we're actively um, implementing a project we've contracted with a company called Waycare, but they're the ones that, that basically is a, a software or um, you know, the connected vehicle information as a service. We're fusing our, our sensors on a roadway with what information they have from their provider. I think it's here and somebody else, but they said basically with that, we'll have 50% coverage of the pro, of traffic on the road Will be represented through that aspect now and so anything that has a gps there, it won't be necessarily two-way communication but um there's it's already the system's already operational out there and our goal is to try to be able to leverage that and again they provide the artificial intelligence machine learning to use the vehicles as a way to detect incidents out there and they've done that out in las vegas this stuff's really on the move Thomas, did you want to comment or? Yeah, um, I think I was <laughs> the guy who said about 30% about that the cars will be self-driven, but 
who says um, it's ever fully realized. Um, I think it doesn't have to be. That's uh, this is. I think we will be in in some five years that new services, uh, the toll services, services along the route, and the ITS will merge in in a case. And if you look now at the newest cars, I I know they're the services of the Hickey manufacturers will offer more services. Uh, nowadays, you can unlock your, your car with, with, a, with a cloud service, or you can even buy some fu functions uh, later on on the service. I think these platforms um, will integrate more and more services, um, shopping, entertainment, um, but also penetrate into areas uh, that were now reserved for companies like us. Yeah, I think this might be a, a, a part we have to, to think about. Um, and therefore, innovation also will be uh, there a part of us. And about electricity, um, I think we have to discuss if the part of an operator, of a road operator, is uh, nowadays to make a tolling, but maybe in future also to, uh, not only to collect the toll, even to give energy. So to get a, a solar power or whatever a kind of, of electricity, but not only to sell the, the tolls, and also to give the electricity to support the case. Great, thanks, Thomas. Um, couple, I have another question. So we, we've talked a little bit about um, automated vehicles. Uh, you know, there's been a lot of enthusiasm for them, and we've talked about. I, I think there's a lot of ADAS systems out there, uh, active uh, advanced dri driver active safety systems. But do we do we see level five automation like in the next five years where they will have a car that can go anywhere or will it be largely um, limited to geographies like level level two, level three, level four. Um, any comments or questions on that one? Uh, maybe let me, let me think about something. Um, we are talking uh, about technology. I think technology is important to make case going on, to make case uh, ready for future. But uh, we also have uh, developed the interaction with humans. Uh, um, a few years ago, industry 4.0 was a keyword for an industrial progress. But what comes after industry 4.0? I think it's time to the society 5.0. What means society 5.0? It means that the technology is an important part to make case uh, ready. But the interfaces to human and to the case, there we have to put some focus on. Um, and there I think also innovation is the key, is the key to, to make this, uh, make case to the mainstream. Okay, Brennan, you were gonna so, comment? I mean, uh, level five is pretty ambitious. Uh, as you see, uh, Ford's been more conservative than others in deploying uh, autonomous vehicles. Uh, as you can see, we're, ours are more in the level four range in Austin, Miami, and DC. So they're geo-fenced. Um, we see that as being, you know, the future going forward, at least for now. Um, that's not to say that there might not be some breakthroughs coming, coming soon, but I think the conservative approach is probably the best approach. But what we will see uh, before we ever see mass deployment uh, across all the cities with fours and fives uh, will be dedicated, you know, the short range communication, CV to X, which we call DSRC 2.0. Basically, you're gonna see more short range and connected uh, technology use cases along with advanced driver assist systems that take uh, advantage of those messages, basically. Great, That's a, thanks, that's very clear. Uh, one of the things I wanted to ask you, Brennan, and not to share anything uh, that's not public, but could you describe the Cabinou, the Cabinou project in Michigan? Like, I know we see a lot of press about it. What, what are the, what is uh, Sidewalk Infra Labs or partners trying to accomplish? Okay, so I am not involved with Cabinou, but I have been, you know, I've, I've seen the basically. The briefing on what's going on. So Michigan Avenue is a road that runs basically from Detroit to Ann Arbor, Jeff. Um, it's a very fine road. So <laughs> for the Wolverine fans out there, there you go. 
<clears throat> so um, basically sidewalk infrastructure partners is a is a division of uh, alphabet and they they uh, won a contract to study basically a public park pro, public private partnership with uh, Michigan Department of Transportation on uh, Michigan Avenue to study and possibly implement a connected autonomous vehicle um, priority lane, basically going both directions on Michigan Avenue. So that lane would be open to vehicles that were autonomous and able to take advantage of that that lane, almost almost like what Brian was talking about with some pl platooning use cases, but basically a dedicated lane. Great, thanks, thanks for that. Um, I don't see questions from the group, so I'll continue to ask you. Uh, Brian, I did wanna ask about your in-road charging test, because we were talking a little bit about electric vehicle. One of the questions that came up was in the chat was uh, range anxiety and other things. Could you maybe describe, I mean, I guess people, I would be concerned about, is it cost effective to inlay, uh, you know, charging circuits in the road? I mean, how far along are you in your thinking in that uh, particular test? Well, I mean, one thing is to look at what, what's going on in other countries. Um, you know, Sweden comes to mind as well as Germany. And this is something that they've been looking at and working with for quite some time. Um, is it cost prohibitive? Today it is, but we have to look at what the future is going to be. And as we look at the, the death of the combustible engine, as we talked about earlier, um, you know, EV, EVs are, are the future. And so, um, you know, number one, we're going to see battery life extended exponentially um, as the technology improves. Um, but there has to be a better way to charge vehicles. Um, we love the convenience of being able to uh, drive our vehicles, to quickly fuel our vehicles, to pull into a gas station and, you know, fill our tanks, um, having to sit for 20, 30 minutes for a charge um, is something that I don't, I don't think is going to be conducive to how we're going to want to be able to operate a vehicle in the future. So um, inductive road charging um, is a technology that is just in the beginning evolutionary stages. Um, so it has a long way to go as well. Um, but it's potentially the future, the ability to charge a vehicle as it's driving. Jeff, do you have any, uh, is uh, CTRMA looking at any techniques like this or what, uh, are you going to add charging stations to your roadside to, to enable EVs? Um, yeah, we do on our new 183 South project um, next to uh, one of the park parking locations off-road, we've set up a charging station with some solar, solar panels. Uh, we have done an analysis on our system about where we could put uh, other solar, solar panels. I know that's a little bit different what you asked, but right now we're, um, we're it's just starting with TxDOT. It's sure. TxDOT, I pretty much all our right away is in concert with TxDOT. Excellent, excellent, thanks Jeff. My last question um, and it, it is, as we look at like CV to X, I assume Jeff and, and maybe Brian can comment on this, the, uh, the road operators uh, with CV to X, because you have location capability in the vehicle device, uh, you don't need line of sight to the, uh, to the reader, the antenna, you presumably can do it via a roadside unit uh, that just receives the data. That was that, is that how you've deployed it in Texas? You're just using roadside units and is there potentially a day when we can eliminate gantries? I mean save some costs for tow roads? Yeah, um, so here in Texas, we did it. We installed seven on two different roads, uh, roadside units. And it's right, some are right in the gantry, some are in advance. We've got a road, wrong way driving system that has that. So right now we're just doing it based upon the line of sight installations. I think as far as um, elimination of gantries or tolls, it, it may be a while, maybe 10, 15 years. Um, there's a lot of concerns over GPS um, and how you can tie that down and not be spoofed. But there's other things with camera technology that could probably oversight, 
um, probably offset that. But as far as ITS technology, you can definitely eliminate that. That's our belief. You know, we have one roadway, Mopac, we were planning $10 million worth of improvements, typical ITS approach. And we've, we've pretty much put that on hold. We think the future is in, is in the RSUs and that CB to X uh, connected vehicle technology. Great. Brian, any thoughts on elimination of toll gantries over time? Um, yeah, I, I think we have a ways to go. Um, and, you know, I think we're going to see, um, you know, I know I'm, I'm on the easy pass IEG technical committee. Um, you know, there's a variety of ways that tolling can go in the future. And um, I think it's going to take us some time, though, to be able to find those technologies and get them to a level where we fully can trust their ability to give us what we have today in terms of accuracy and um, also, you know, focusing on leakage and, and being able to deal with that effectively. So I think gantries are going to be around, um, I would say, for at least uh, another decade. Excellent. Great. Thank you again to the panelists. Thank you uh, to the attendees for joining us. Uh, one last question uh, in the chat box is how to get involved with the two subcommittees. Um, you can go to uh, www.ibtta.org. Um, and obviously uh, we have some upcoming events, uh, IBTTA Technology Days. So we're working on that now. Uh, it'll be like this, only more. Uh, and uh, coming up at Cafe IBTTA, we have uh, Nicole Little Lacori from uh, FTE, Kathleen Masterson from Transport Infrastructure Ireland, and Renee Moser, uh, Thomas's colleague at Aspenag. Uh, don't forget, we have the Technology Summit coming to Atlanta in May, and as well as the annual meeting on October in Anaheim. Again, a uh, big round of applause, virtual applause for uh, the panelists. I really appreciate, uh, really appreciate your time and insight. Uh, and thank you to the attendees. Have a great day, everyone.